Hey, Wagwan. Yeah, man, it's Mr. Galthrid here again. And I'm doing a Cape Integrated Mathematics question for module three, which is calculus. Okay, we're gonna be looking at some integration problems. And these questions here were taken from the specimen paper provided in the syllabus, all right? So let's just look at the first part of the question. It says that we are to determine the indefinite integral of two X minus four raised to the power of seven with respect to X, all right? Now we call this an indefinite integral because if you look at the, the integral symbol there, you realize that there's no limits, right? But if you look at the second question, which says evaluate, right? You realize that you have limits in the integral from zero to pi, right? So once you do see the limits, it is called an indefinite integral. And if you do see the limits, it means that it is a definite integral. Okay, great. Let's do part one here. So this is part one solution. All right, part one solution. Great, we want to integrate two X minus four to the power of seven. Integrate two X minus four raised to the power of seven with respect to X, all right? Now, how would you integrate this with respect to X? Some persons might say I can let U be equal to two X minus four, right? So I can make a substitution and find the integral. You can certainly do that. All right, but I'm not going to take that route, okay? Because if you know the rule, things will be much better for you, right? You can go about in the exam faster, all right? You don't have to waste any time to do any substitution. So let me just do a recall here for you, all right? If you have the integral of ax plus b raised to the power of n with respect to x, meaning that you have a, you have a, linear expression in the brackets, right? Meaning that the power of x is one, all right? Raised to a real number power n, then when you integrate that, it is gonna be equal to the same expression, ax plus b, but you add one to the power, right? So that's n plus one, and then you divide by that new power, which is the n plus one, but you must multiply by the derivative of what is inside the brackets here, okay? When you differentiate ax plus b with respect to x, you get a, so you're multiplying the n plus one by a, okay? Great, and plus our arbitrary constant of integration, which is c, okay? And this rule is applicable as long as n is not equal to negative one. And n is a real number, of course, right? Great. So once the power of n is negative one, that rule cannot be applied, okay? But our n here is seven, so it means that we can apply the rule, okay? So let's just now integrate this. So we write back the expression two x minus four. We add one to the power, so that's seven plus one, okay? Seven plus one, that's eight. And we divide by that new power eight, okay? But you must multiply by the derivative of two X minus four, which is two, okay? Plus our arbitrary constant of integration C. Okay, so if I simplify this now, I will get two X minus four raised to the power of eight, okay? raised to the power of eight. And I'm dividing that by eight times two, which is what? 16, right? So we divide by 16 plus our arbitrary constant of integration C. And that is our solution for this integral. All right, good. Great. So part one of the question is now completed, all right? And let me also comment on this. Some persons might say in order, in order to find the integral of this expression here, the two X minus four raised to the power of seven, that is what we call the integrand, okay? That's what we're trying to integrate. Some persons might say you have to expand this, right? Meaning that you expand two X minus four raised to the power of seven. 
Now, that would be very tedious, all right? Very, very tedious for you, especially. So do not try and take that approach, okay? I would recommend that you use this rule here that I had written above, right here, okay? Or you could let, or you could let u be equal to 2x minus 4 and find the integral, right? Good, because I know that many of you would have to be introduced to substitution first before you actually get down to this rule here, all right? Okay, so part one is now completed. Let's, let's do part B here, which says to evaluate the integral from zero to pi of two cosine x plus three sine x dx, all right? I'll just write that down here. This is now gonna be part two solution. Okay, great. Now we want to find the integral from zero to pi of two cosine x plus three sine x. I want to find the integral of that expression with respect to x. So two cosine x plus three sine x is what we call our integrand, all right? So this function in the brackets here is what we call our integrand. The integrand is basically what we're trying to integrate, all right? Good. Now, this is now a definite integral, all right? Because you realize they will have the limits. So we're going from zero to pi, all right? We're integrating this integrand here from zero to pi. Now, before we actually get, in, get into the definite integral, let us just look at the indefinite integral first, all right? So I would encourage you to integrate it regularly first, right? So find the definite, find the indefinite integral before you actually find the definite integral, okay? So we're gonna find the integral of this expression with respect to x first. So if we integrate, what would we get? Well, we would have two multiplied by the integral of cosine x with respect to x. You should know that the integral of cosine x dx, all right, the integral of cosine x with respect to x is sine x. Okay, that's something that you have to know. Plus c, of course, all right. So this is two sine x plus three times the integral of sine x, all right? So we integrate sine x with respect to x, you get negative cosine x plus c, all right? So if you integrate sine x, we get the negative of cosine x, all right? So that is the integral, but remember that we have to add our arbitrary constant of integration C, all right? So this is now going to be equal to two sine X, three times negative cosine X, that's negative three cos X plus C, all right? Great. So the indefinite integral is now completed. And using this, we can now find the definite integral, okay? So we want to find the integral from zero to pi of two cosine x, all right, plus three, two cosine x plus three sine x dx. So this is now going to be equal to, we know that the indefinite integral of, of this integrand here in the brackets is two sine x minus three cos x. And we're integrating from zero to pi. All right, good. That is what we have. Okay. Now you may be wondering why I didn't write the plus c here. Right, and the reason why we don't write the plus c is because in the end the, the plus c would, would eventually cancel out. 
All right? So you don't necessarily have to put the plus C. Okay? So this is now going to be equal to, we substitute the upper limit and then minus the lower limit. All right? So if we substitute the upper limit, we get two sine of pi minus three cos of pi. And minus, we now substitute the lower limit, which is zero. So that's two sine zero minus three cos zero. Okay, great. Now you could use the calculator to find sine pi, all right? Or if you remember the, the sine wave, all right, or the sine graph, you will recognize that sine pi is actually zero. Okay, so that's really two times zero here, minus three times the cosine of pi, that's actually negative one using a calculator, or if you remember the cosine graph, all right? Now, if you're using a calculator, please ensure that your the calculator is in radian mode, all right? That's what we have, minus two times the sine of zero, so that's two times zero, okay? Sine zero is zero, minus three times the cosine of zero, cos zero is one. Great. Let us now simplify. So this is now going to be equal to, we have zero here, all right? Two times zero is zero, two times zero is zero. So we don't have to look at those, all right? But negative three times negative one is a positive three minus negative three times one, that's negative three, okay? So what we have is three minus negative three, which is the same as three plus three, all right? Yes, so what we have is three plus three, all right, which is six. So we can now say that the integral from zero to pi of two cosine of x plus three sine x with respect to x is six, all right? And that is the end of this question, all right? So I hope this video, I hope this video was helpful for you. All right, if it was, please ensure to like up the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, I am Mr. Garth Reed, student ambassador for the University of Technology Jamaica, and I'm a mathematics teacher in training in the School of Mathematics and Statistics. I thank you for joining.